Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this and share these videos with anyone else studying for the CCNA. In this lab, we will configure HSRP, the Hot Standby Router Protocol. HSRP is an example of an FHRP, a first hop redundancy protocol. HSRP is a Cisco proprietary protocol, by the way, so it operates only on Cisco equipment. VRRP, Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, is a vendor neutral standard similar to HSRP. Redundancy is important in a network because failures can occur and redundancy can prevent service outages if a failure occurs somewhere in the network. In this network, for example, we will configure PCs in VLAN 10 to use R1 as their default gateway. But in the event that R1 fails, PCs will automatically transition to using R2, which is functioning as the standby router as their default gateway. Now, this means that one router will be inactive until the other fails which is a waste of bandwidth. However, we can achieve load balancing by assigning different default gateways for different VLANs. In this network, while as I said before, VLAN 10 will use R1 as the active router and R2 as the standby, we will configure VLAN 20 to use R2 as the active router and R1 as the standby. Let's get started. Let's start with R1's configuration. Enable, conf t, HSRP is configured at the interface level. Let's start with G01. Interface G01. HSRP is configured with the command standby, followed by a group number. I'll use 10 since this will be the default gateway for VLAN 10. Then type IP, followed by the virtual IP address. This is an IP address which isn't necessarily assigned to a physical interface on either router, but the PCs have been configured to use it as their default gateway. So when the PCs send an ARP request for the virtual IP, whichever router is the active router will reply with its own MAC address, so PCs will send traffic to that router. Our instructions say to use 10.10.10.1 as the default gateway for VLAN 10. So, 10.10.10.1. Now, we want to ensure that R1 will be the active router, so let's increase the priority. First, what's the default priority? You can check with this command. Do show standby. So it's priority 100, which is the default. Let's increase the priority for standby group 10. Standby 10 priority and let's increase it to 110. Another part of our instructions is to use HSRP version 2, which offers some minor improvements over version 1. Standby version 2. As you may have noticed, standby version 2 doesn't include the group number. It applies to all standby groups on the interface. Okay, finally, let's enable preemption. Well, what is preemption? If R1 fails, R2 will become the active router for VLAN 10. If preemption is disabled, even if R1 recovers, it won't become the active router again. If preemption is enabled, however, R1 will become active again when it recovers. Here's the command. Standby 10 preempt. Okay, that's all for R1's G01 interface. Instead of finishing the configuration on R1, let's do R2's VLAN 10 configuration and then test it. Enable, conf t, R2 will use the G02 interface, so interface G02. All we have to do for R2 is standby version 2 and standby 10 IP 10.10.10.1. That's it. We don't need to configure preemption here. We only need to configure it on the active router. 
We also don't need to change the priority since we already made R1s higher. Okay, let's go on PC1 to test. First, I'll see if I can ping the virtual IP of 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 .1. Ping 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 .10 Okay, it works. Now let's try to ping the external server at 15.0.0.1. Ping 15.0.0.1. Okay, it works too. Now let's confirm the path being taken. Traceroute 15.0.0.1. As you can see, Traceroute shows R1's IP address, not the virtual IP address, so you can use it to confirm the path. Let's go do a reload on R1 and see if R2 takes over. End. Reload. Okay, let's go on R2 and check if it took over for R1. Do show standby. As you can see, R2 is now active. Let's quickly try that trace route from PC1 again. Trace route 15.0.0.1. Now you can see it goes via R2 at 10.10.10.3. Now R1 is in the process of booting up. However, when it finishes, it should take over again as the active router since we configured preemption. I'll just wait for another 10 seconds or so and then go check. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. Let's go on R1 and check. Enable, show standby. There, R1 is the active router once again. Let's trace route one last time from PC1. Trace route 15.0.0.1. Now it's going via R1 again, not R2. So the configuration for VLAN 10 is complete. Now let's configure the opposite setup for VLAN 20. R2 should be the active router with R1 as backup or standby. I'll configure the active R2 first. Interface G01. Standby version 2. Standby 20, IP 10.20.20.1. Standby 20, preempt. Just to make things different, I won't increase the priority on the active. Let's decrease the priority on the standby instead. So that's all for R2. Let's go to R1. Conf T, interface G02. Standby version 2, standby 20, IP 10.20.20.1. Standby 20, priority 90. Okay, that's all. Give them some time to talk with each other and figure things out, but soon R2 should become the active and R1 the standby for VLAN 20. Let's try a ping from PC3. First, I'll try to ping the virtual router to make sure. Ping 10.20.20.1. Okay, we can reach it. Now let's try to ping out to the external server. Ping 15.0.0.1. Okay, it's reachable. So now let's check the path it's taking. Trace route 15.0.0.1. As you can see, it's going via R2 at 10.20.20.2. Let's test the failover again. I'll reload R2. End. Reload. 
Okay, let's give R1 a few seconds to take its role as active for VLAN 20. Okay, let's try. Let's hop back on PC3 and trace route again. Trace route 15.0.0.1. Great, the failover worked, and the ping is now going via R1 at 10.20.20.3 this time. Let's wait another 10 seconds or so for R2 to come back online and take over once again as the active router. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. Let's give that trace route one more try here on PC3. Trace route 15.0.0.1. All right, now it's back to using R2 as the gateway. In this lab, we configured HSRP and also showed how you can configure load balancing by configuring different active routers for different VLANs. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comments section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.